okay uh, this derivation p equal to rho g is we already did it right uh, anyone has any question about that derivation uh, that derivation sometime it comes in the exam they derive the equation fundamental equation of pressure or hydrostatic pressure p equal to rho g h sometime we call uh, put question like that uh, derive the hydrostatic pressure equation of the fluid p equal to h rho g or p equal to h gamma okay uh, i hope all of you understand easily so we derive this equation p equal to rho g h for incompressible and stationary fluid this one okay but what would be the equation if fluid is compressible what will be equation and uh, that equation i uh, will just put it over here for compressible mean density is not constant so our equation p equal to rho g s this was our equation have you got it when we make the force balance along vertical direction we got dz by dp was not zero we got some value that was minus rho g or we can say minus gamma right so if we dz dp equal to minus rho g then we derive right so you see right over uh, okay uh, this one i put in opposite direction it should be dp by dz not dz by dp so this equal to we got rho into g or gamma you look this equation for incompressible flow that means for fluid rho is constant so this will be a constant but when flow or fluid is compressible then rho is no more constant now we know that p equal to rho rt and this rho equal to p by rt this one like this equation ideal gas law then this row will put it over here then we'll uh, integrate the both side then see how it is look like so we put over here so we are getting pg by rt minus dp by dz from here you can rearrange the equation you can write down dp by p equal to dz right so in the right hand side p you bring in the bottom right hand side you have g divided by r right then you have integration of dz by t g by r is a constant so if we do the integration left hand side will be ln p then integrate point on to p2 so you get ln p2 by p1 right hand side you have dz by t you have z1 to z2 that mean t is not function of z so ultimately you are getting this equation in the right side what are you getting in the upper integration you are getting right side minus g by r 
R. In the top, you are getting G2 minus G1. And the bottom, you are getting T. And this, if its flow is, or fluid is isothermal, isothermal means temperature is not very, then this is called T is a constant. If T temperature is very with the depth of the fluid, then you have to keep the equation like that. Then you have to figure out what is the, how T varies with the Z. But if T is constant, that means isothermal condition, then equation is coming like over here. <coughs> So right hand side, you are getting this one and left side, you are getting uh, lawn. So it is that one. Left side, you are getting on second. Lawn P2 by P1, right? Now uh, log X equal to a what will be value of x x equal to e to the power a okay that we got from the math so from here you will get p2 by p1 equal to e to the power minus something okay that is showing this is e to the power the exp Okay, this must from here just give you an idea. <coughs> and sometime if I mention that uh, derive the hydrostatic pressure equation for a uh, compressible fluid, then how will derive? At first, you derive the equation until this mass, then you uh, came in over here the rho equal to PRT, you substitute in this equation, then you write this mass, okay? Okay, uh, now what is the relationship between uh, gauge pressure and the absolute pressure? So, <coughs> If you have gauge pressure, with that gauge pressure, you add atmospheric pressure, you get absolute pressure, okay? So absolute pressure equal to gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure. Uh, what is the gauge pressure? That pressure you are getting from a device, from a pressure gas, okay? You see, even gas pressure is negative or positive, but absolute pressure will be always uh, positive. Okay. If um, your gas pressure might be negative vacuum, then it will be P atmosphere pressure minus vacuum pressure. Okay. Uh, right over here, just to give you some. Uh, unit of pressure uh, you can express the pressure in terms of pascal mega pascal or bar uh, bar equal to 100 kilo pascal or 0.1 mega pascal and what is the atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure equal to this mass or 1.01 kilo pascal in uh, other unit that means in BTC unit, it is come atmospheric pressure 14.7 psi. Okay. So, sometime in the problem, we don't give you the value of atmospheric pressure. But as a mechanical engineer or student of fluid mechanics, you need to remember some data. Atmospheric value of atmospheric pressure, you need to know. Then what is the average room temperature around 22 degree that you need to memorize? What is the density of water? What is the density of air? 
you need to memorize those things. Other things, what is the viscosity of water and what is the viscosity of air. So those data you need to memorize, okay. Uh, right over here is just uh, showing the uh, Pascal law that how we can utilize the pressure into force you, from the low force, how we can get a higher force that is saying over here. So what is saying over here that you apply force over here if pressure is in the fluid pressure is p so if you apply force f1 then what will happen this fluid will go down right so your force will be p into a1 similarly right over here your force will be area into p right now you can figure out the value of p from here we're getting p equal to f1 by a1 similarly p equal to f2 by a2 so it is just showing how you can get a higher force from a lower force by using the fluid pressure and fluid law, okay? So now you can write F2 by A1, right? If you write down right in the bottom, F2 by A2 equal to, F1 by A1. Now, you figure out value of F2. So, you figure out value of F2 equal to A2 divided by A1 into F1. So, what do you see over, over here? you see the ratio of area is more than one because A2 is bigger, A1 is small. So obviously F2 will be greater than F1. So if we apply a more small force, you'll get bigger force right over here. This is called mechanical advantage of fluid uh, fluid pressure. If you have a equal pressure in a fluid, you use a small area, you can get a higher force. Okay. Uh, normally, hydraulic jack, lift, then hydraulic press, uh, or hydraulic machinery, or hydraulic control system, they use this principle that if you apply a small force, you are able to get bigger force. You have a hydraulic jack and you are traveling in a car, your tire is going bad, you can lift your car by applying more uh, little force in the hydraulic jack, okay? So mechanical force applied through jack action or compressed air are the example of transmission of getting force from a fluid pressure. Getting not only force, higher force, okay? Now, uh, the second slide, okay. we know that fluid pressure P equal to H rho G. <coughs> but we like to see that pressure from all direction that mean 
if you think a very small fluid particle inside a fluid, obviously static fluid, in that case, pressure from, how much pressure will you experience from this side, from along this direction and also vertical direction. We have three axes, Z, Y, X. So, EX will be equal to EY equal to EZ. What is the condition? This fluid particle remains in static condition at a certain depth of the fluid. He is not moving. In that case, he is expressing pressure from the top, from the side, left side, right side. And all the side, he will experience same pressure. And that we need to uh, prove. So how we can prove? Okay. So it's saying pressure at any point of fluid at rest has magnitude in all direction. Uh, magnitude is not zero. It have a certain hello. So we are considering a fluid element, very infinite, small, very small. And what kind of shape is the OS shape? OS shape means half of the brick. If you have brick, you cut that brick diagonally, that is called OS shape. Fluid element at rest. Only force acting on the free body at the normal pressure. Only pressure is working and also weight of the body, fluid element. So we will uh, figure out the how this body remains in static condition. We will apply the law of equilibrium from the your uh, engineering mechanics. So let's look to the dimension of the fluid element. This is height is dz, and this is is the dy. So on this length, we can figure out from this two side, right? By applying law of rectangle, um, <coughs> right? But we are thinking this S is delta S. And you cut the angle of the OS element is theta, okay? So we know that fluid pressure always work perpendicular to the surface. So if I make the force balance along y direction, how many force will have? That we need to figure out. So at first, you look to the pressure, the how many force is working. So only we have pressure force and weight of the fluid working downward. So what is the weight of the fluid? You need to figure out the volume of the fluid, right? If it is a full brick, then what will be volume? dx, dy, dz, that will be volume, right? Since it is a half brick, just you put the half. Then multiply by rho z, it will get weight. So this weight is directly working downward. And this vertical phase experience pressure from the left side. From this side, it experiencing pressure. Similarly, the bottom horizontal phase is expressing pressure upward, and the inclined surface acting pressure perpendicular to the surface. Now you do the force balance along y-axis. So along y-axis, how much will be force from the this is force into area. I'm sorry, pressure into area, right? That will be force F equal to pressure into area. So what is the area of this side? Uh, 
dx into vertical s dz. So this is my area. What is the force working? We are thinking force working along y direction is py because working along y direction, that's why we say py. Then this force working downward, this is upward, then force we have over here. If this angle is theta, then this will be theta. Okay. Now this pressure is always or perpendicular to the surface. So if you make two component, this will be this force into sine theta and in vertical direction, this will be cos theta, right? Now, what is this area? Delta X into delta S. So P into delta X, delta S is the force. So it is horizontal component will be sine theta, right? P S delta S DS into sine theta equal to zero. Now, if you apply the triangular law, sine and cos, then you are getting, you see this delta y, delta y equal to, or you apply the cos theta, this triangle, you apply cos theta, so cos theta equal to base, that means delta y by ds. And if you apply sine theta, then it will be dz by ds. Okay, so this is our force balance equation. Now, this ds, dz will take it out. So, dz equal to sine theta ds, sine theta into ds, I'll keep it as it. Now, how do you see? And this value, this will be out. So, you are getting py equal to ps, that means pressure working this surface and this surface is same. Okay. Now, uh, if we take summation of force along um, vertical direction, that to what we are getting, we have three force in vertical direction. This one, this one, and this vertical component. So first take is this one. So this force will be pressure into area. So our area, how much? dy into dx into pz. That will be uh, force. So right over here, that component pz into area. Then you take that one horizontal vertical component. So this is area, this is pressure, this is the force. This force is multiplied by cos theta. So PS into area into cos theta, that is total force. Then weight of the fluid working downward. So gamma delta X del Y DZ, this is weight, okay? Now, this cos theta, we can take it out because ds cos theta, which value? dy. If you use the uh, tongue right over here, dy equal to ds cos theta. So for this value, we put dy. Now, this one, we can neglect. Why? You cannot say this value is zero because we already mentioned that fluid element have certain dimension. It has a weight, density, pressure, temperature. 
all the property it has even you make very smaller all the value is non zero but this value because delta x delta y and delta z it will be very smaller value then all three small value you multiply then this value will be very negligible we can say we can neglect it now what are doing over here if we neglect we are sacrificing the accuracy that's why we need to make sure that our uh, error is not that much how will you prove it you do you make some product by applying fluid law then you test it that what is the variation between the practical result and the theoretical result okay so we ignore uh, this value then from here we are getting this equation and dx dy out finally we're getting pz equal to ps and ps equal to py so from this three equation, two equation we can say py equal to pz equal to ps okay this is also is called pascal's law fluid pressure same in all direction okay uh, so far any question anyone no uh, okay if pressure this law this one for a fluid with static condition is not moving uh, this is known as pascal law and apply to fluid at rest but a fluid in motion then this law is not right it will not you cannot apply this law to a moving fluid element okay because in the moving fluid element your fluid element would not remain in uh, fixed shape it will continuously it will sense due to the viscosity or due to the shear stress then the pressure at a point is defined as average pressure of all three mutually perpendicular plane that means if you consider a point in a full element or uh, consider a point inside a moving fluid or you can consider a fluid element inside a moving fluid then it will experience pressure summation of all three pressure from uh, x axis y axis z axis then you take the average okay this much pressure uh, is filled by a moving fluid element Okay, uh, any question so far? Anyone? Uh, seems like no question. Okay. Uh, what we will do? Uh, here is a problem about the capillary rise. How you can figure out the capillary force in a fluid so i think this derivation we already might be uh, show you i'm not sure anyway you see right over here a pitot tube small glass tube you insert in a another fluid right over here then right over here due to the surface tension height of the fluid is increased over here also increase and you see you insert the tube in the bigger uh, pot or jar you see this mass height is increase from here to here and this height is is called capillarity height so how it happened and 
for a fluid how we can figure out this value of h you see if radius of this small tip is r then this 2r the height is s and you see why the fluid right over here is remaining triangular shape okay because the surface tension working in the angle uh, what i like to say your manicas of the fluid top surface it might remain like that okay so it's supposed to be flat horizontal but due to the surface tension it is going along is force working sigma and this sigma makes certain angle with the wall if i say it male theta if it is theta then you see you can make a component of this theta one force is horizontal one force is vertical similarly this one you can this will be horizontal this will be vertical so this for this for ultimately cancel out but upward direction force still active due to this upward uh, force the fluid will fluid height will raise at the contact surfaces of the jar that mean uh, due to the that surface tension you see this mass height is increasing of the fluid okay now why it is not going down because due to the sigma but we can make a force balance this force working if you make component on force working vertical direction right over here working vertical direction so how is balance this vertical force obviously it balance by volume of fluid of this mass height because their weight is working downward so what is the weight of the fluid of this portion volume into density right into g then you will get the weight so how will get the weight so what will be volume this one your area will be pi r square right area is pi r square then multiply the height a is you'll get the volume then rho g or you can multiply the gamma you get the weight so this weight working downward the w equal to gamma pi r square h now you do, do the force balance a light of it take the vertical component now this force actually working along all the area of the jar or along the length because your jar is circular cross section right so your surface tension working along all edges outer edges of the tube okay of the capillary tube so surface tension working in all the point all the length so length is 2 pi r other thing what is the unit of surface tension force working per unit length that mean unit of sigma surface tension equal to some value force per unit length or newton per meter so in that case what is our length 2 pi r so 2 pi r 
into sigma that will be the force you can say 2 pi into r into this is 2 pi r is the length then you multiply by sigma that is the total force working at angle theta what is, will be the vertical component you multiply by cos theta so this force will be equal to w and that we put over here gamma pi r square is equal to sigma cos theta into 2 pi r and this is the force balance equation right over here and now from here you put w over here then you figure out the h so h is equal to this value 2 sigma cos theta divided by gamma r so if you insert a tube in a certain fluid say in a honey or in a liquid oxygen in liquid nitrogen then you might be able to see that theoretically you can figure out the height how much capillary height will be in the tube uh, what you need to know you need to know the sigma surface tension of the fluid you need to know this angle then you need to know gamma you need to know r you see if it surface area uh, that size of the tube is increasing then age value will be low then if gamma is equal to rho g then if density will increase then age value will be very low that's why you have a bigger size tube you put in the water you will not able to see that much height in your eye because the radius is too high so that's why age value is very low you cannot observe but if you make the very um, a size of the tube very smaller that may r very smaller then this height will be increase okay uh, so far any question anyone anyone any question no okay uh, let's start with uh, we can solve a problem Uh, problem regarding to the capillary height, uh, capillary rise. Okay, it's saying that 0.6 millimeter glass tube, you see diameter, not even say 6 millimeter, 0.6 millimeter. That means very smaller tube is inserted into water at 20 degree in a cup. Determine the capillary rise of water in the tube as shown figure below. So you see that surface tension is working along vertically. That means if I make the tube, draw the tube, then right over here, kind of like that that means this right over here normally we have along this direction but in that case the fluid at the surface is tangential directly tangential to the t wall that means working directly vertical direction not the theta so in that case actually theta equal to how much theta equal to zero right because you have a tube is going like that right 
this is theta theta increase this line will move along this direction theta decreasing this line along move this wall that means if theta equal to right over here theta is zero and how will get the value of surface tension you see value of surface tension is giving right over here at one atmospheric pressure is what is the value zero degree uh, 0 0.76 newton per meter then 20 degree 100 degree 30 300 degree value is given here temperature increasing surface tension decreasing so from this table you need to figure out value of sigma then you need to figure out the capillary rise or capillary height of water in the tube so very simple problem you need to first write down what data is given a diameter of the tube 0.6 millimeter from there you figure out the radius one button meter surface tension it's saying 20 degrees celsius temperature so you have surface tension then you figure out density density water you know thousand at normal temp room temperature then as per figure angle equal to zero theta equal to zero so your capillary rise formula is this one ac equal to two sigma cos theta by rho g r or uh, r gamma same thing from here you will get this meter then you can convert in millimeter okay so you see uh, the capillary height about 50 millimeter but tube size 0.6 so easily you can uh, see the capillary height in the tube okay any any question from anyone no question yes sir no okay. sir okay uh, this uh, lecture sheet 2 is finished and we have to take the quiz right almost time so how did you want you want quiz or you want assignment Sir, I think assignment would be better. Uh, assignment will be better, but in fluid mechanics, you have, uh, I normally give one assignment, not now, later on, okay? I'll lead to the ideal wall uh, problem. But uh, in the first one, will be a quiz, okay? And uh, in the next class, I'll give you the syllabus, and your quiz will be next week that sounds good i'll give you a problem and give you one hour time within one hour you will submit your script sounds good there will be one problem i'll give you a problem you solve it it might take 10 minutes to solve so but, one hour time with uh, submission time right yeah everything within one hour okay so only one question will be there right might be one and, and two okay i'll not give that much question that you are not able to solve in uh, one hour okay 30 minutes sir is there would be any theoretical question uh no it will be conceptual one question and one question regarding math. math math yeah okay so if you are present in the class you are able to solve it easily okay so i have a question on the math yeah so why theta equal to zero uh, because in the figure you, you are showing when you observing 
say you insert a tube in the jar you you have that tube then say your water top surface or many cas you see like that that means obviously in that case theta is not zero then how anyway then you have to theta measure it because if you make the tangent along this line theta is going surface tension working along this direction that means theta is not zero okay but is surface adhesion property is too big then right over here that this line might be become a tangent to the wall if becoming tangent to the wall then that means this force working parallel to the wall surface so in that case theta is coming zero you got my point you have to observe you insert the tube in a fluid then you have to observe the how mass angle make in the by the manicas to the wall this is called manicas what is the manicas the curved surface of the fluid is called manicas it might be upward it might be this direction if it is if property is dominant cohesion property or it might be become like that so both the case this curve is called manicas so you have to look the manicas how mass angle is making with the wall like in, the, in this case it surface tension working along this direction right but if it is make a directly tangent to the surface like that then angle will be upward okay but it's showing it is not going downward it is showing the like that right so it making tangent at the wall that's why they are showing exactly vertical direction how will derive this formula we derive this formula that this angle is zero i'm sorry theta so the theta getting smaller that means this line is coming to the wall so for this situation theta is zero clear the adhesion property is too big it is directed by the figure adhesion property yes sir remember what is adhesion property yes sir adhesion property that means fluid particle it has both property adhesion and cohesion due to the adhesion they like to stick with the wall okay so this one this case the adhesion property is dominant is more that's why some fluid they like to stick with the wall okay that's why is this mass height actually increase that mean manicas is form inside the fluid similarly right over here this mass height increase this triangular form this is also due to the adhesion property okay but uh, you carefully look you just insert the tube in the empty tube in the bigger uh, pot or bigger jar and you see this mass height fluid is going easily visible from this surface to this surface this height now why the height increasing that means somebody pulling it upward right so you need to figure out that force that who is pulling it obviously what are only one force surface tension and other one weight of the force weight of the force working downward surface tension pulling try to pull him upward so if surface tension is higher than the weight of the body 
then obviously the age value will be positive. That's why you see this height is increasing. Okay. Okay, sir. And if you look some data right over here at room temperature and one atmospheric pressure, they're giving some value of surface tension like water, glycerin, uh, blood, soap solution, kerosene oil, you know. Okay, so this chapter is uh, finished. Now uh, we'll start uh, next chapter. So, so far, what we learn? We learn what is the significance of uh, fluid mechanics, why uh, we do, we study. What is the fluid mechanics? How uh, we can apply the law of engineering mechanics to the fluid mechanics, right? Then we learn some property of the fluid, density, specific gravity, viscosity, kinematic viscosity, dynamic viscosity, right? Then uh, we learn Newton law of viscosity. Then we learn fluid pressure. We derive the hydrostatic equation E equal to H to G. So you see, then we learn surface tension, capillarity, adhesion, and cohesion property of the fluid. Newtonian, non Newtonian fluid and their properties, right? But all of those things you see, uh, the pressure is very important property because due to the pressure, we got the force. And your engineering mechanics work with the force, right? So in fluid mechanics, we also work with the force. So if I work with the force, then uh, pressure is the most dominant property of the fluid in fluid mechanics. So you need to know that how you can measure the pressure in a system. For example, you have a boiler, you like to measure the pressure. You have a tank filled with gas, how you can measure that pressure? Then uh, you working in a company, you design a pipeline. How we can measure the pressure in the pipeline? Okay. So we need to know how you can measure the pressure in a system. For example, as a mechanical engineer, you are designing uh, air conditioning system. If you enter in an official building, you see the rectangular duct through the duct the air is coming out, cool air, right? So you need to figure out how, what is the pressure inside. Now, <clears throat> you might say, okay, I, I just put a pressure gas. It's possible, but in some situation, situation you cannot put pressure gas because pressure gas sometimes not able to measure the very small value of the pressure then you need to use some other equipment. And you need to know how those things work, okay? So uh, let's share a screen with lecture sheet three. One second. You can see now, right? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, it's saying pressure measurement. How we can measure the pressure in a fluid. Obviously, you might say, sir, uh, we can use pressure gas. Yes, we will use pressure gas. And so there is some other uh, pressure measuring device. So all the pressure measuring device, uh, we can divide in two category. Number one is manometer. Other thing is mechanical gas. 
by those type of device, you are able to measure the fluid pressure. Now, what is the manometer? It is a device who is measure pressure of fluid based on principle of balancing of column of liquid uh, by the same or another column of liquid like mercury, oil, alcohol, or water. And uh, they are called manometric fluid. And manometer is two types. One is simple manometer, other one is differential manometer. Now, how we see that how, what is the, look in the definition that it use pressure is measured based on balancing of column of liquid by the same or another column of liquid. So you need to know how it is work. Say, for example, you have a pipe flow. I am just keeping two opening over here. So is fluid is flowing through the pipeline or tube they have opening. So what will happen? Fluid will come out through the opening, right? This opening, also this opening. Which one will have higher flow? This opening or first one? Leakage of fluid, where will be higher? First one, sir. First one. First one. Yes. Why? It is closer because the fluid energy right here will be higher. So it will get out from the first port with higher velocity. But gradually, if he move, he lose some energy due to the friction with the pipe. So fluid have less energy right over here. So it will flow a little bit with less velocity, right? Now, if I add a tube i like to close this uh, port or hole i like to put at a state tube kind of making you okay then fluid will enter in that tube it might get out through the tube right depends on the uh, pressure right over here. Now, you attach a tube, then you fill up this tube, say this is going water, W. You fill up with master oil, kerosene. You need to make sure density is higher than water or honey, or say you fill up this with mercury, denser fluid, okay? So if pressure this point and this point is same, this one full with, with the mercury and hot about this height, it will be full by water, right? This height will be water. So if fluid pressure, uh, when it remain both side in the same height, because fluid pressure, if right over here, and right over here is the same, then this height will be in the same height, in the both arm. This arm and this arm, you see they remain in same plane. Why? Because pressure is same. Because he is trying to push the mercury down and he also try to push the mercury down. But both have the same force. Pressure is same, area also same of the tip. So force will be same. That's why he is not moving, even in the static elevation, same elevation. But if uh, in one side, for example, pressure is high, you say in upper section, if uh, I, Okay, say right over here at point one, this is point two. So P1 
is higher than P2, then what will be happen? At the earlier, I show you the height was same, but right now height will not be same. This will be, this side will be go up. Why? Because right over here, pressure is high. Also over here, water. So he's tried to force, push down the mercury with higher force. And he is a little bit weaker. So he is also trying, but his force is not same as F1. OK? So that's why you will see some difference in height of column. This much difference. That means between these two points, you can measure the pressure. Difference between point one, two. That is the basic principle of manometer. Okay. Other thing I can show you. For example, you have a pressure vessel in your home and like i am saying i attached a tube you have a say some pressurized fluid and you have this fluid coming over here when this fluid will get out from this tube right over here when anyone Say so inside has a pressure. I'm saying pressure is PI inside. When it will get out? When PI will increase. Increase. How much increase? When how much pressure right over here is opening to the atmosphere? So P is P atmospheric pressure, right? So if PI is higher than atmospheric pressure, this atmospheric pressure try to push the fluid down and he is try to pushing him up. If PI is higher than the atmospheric pressure, then it will get out. Okay. But if PI is low, lower than atmospheric pressure, then fluid will not come out through the tube. But you might see little height over here. So for measuring this height, you can figure out the pressure inside the tank, okay? Uh, for example, sometime you might see you using toothpaste and you, the cap, you keep open by mistake. And after some time you uh, went to your, you know, washroom and you see that toothpaste is coming out from the tube. What is the reason? Because inside has a pressure, but from the outside, atmospheric pressure try to squeeze him, and your fluid is getting out from the tube. Okay, so just give you an example that how pressure work and how we can measure. So that is called manometer. And manometer is two types. One is called simple manometer. Other one is called differential manometer. And you need to know that when you will use differential manometer and when you will use the simple one. Okay. <laughs> simple manometer uh, is used to measure pressure at a point. That means at one point you like to measure pressure for example you attached a pressure gauge in a gas cylinder that is a simple manometer principle but most common type is called a pgo meter most common type of simple manometer then it's called e-tube manometer single column manometer that is the example of simple manometer so when a manometer call it simple when it is giving a pressure at a single point 
not the pressure difference between two point but if you like to measure pressure difference between two point by a manometer then that manometer is called differential manometer right over here it's called differential manometer and there is common type are two piezometer inverted u tube manometer u tube differential manometer and also the one man is called macro manometer okay and we'll show you some figure then it will be more uh, clear uh, right over here you see that one is piezometer and is simple manometer because you are trying to measure the pressure and only in the tank this is tank is showing very smaller size right over here it might be a bigger size tank okay so you see this opening okay so you can from this height of the column of the fluid you can measure the pressure of the fluid what happened pressure right over here and right over here is same why same anyone can tell me anyone this point two point i mark with smaller circle pressure will be same because they are in the same level in the fluid their height respective horizontal they are remaining in a plane so pressure at this two point same now what will be pressure right over here anyone It you want to, to change uh how to say it will change yes sir it will start to change it will start to change uh no yeah, i'm saying pressure right over here right over here is same and how you can measure pressure this point from the figure from the data given in the figure. h rho g because height of the column is h1 you know this one are say in a river you are swimming at a depth h1 then how much will be pressure on your body rho water g h1 rho g h1 right over here same only difference is the, the size is big in a swimming in a river or lake but right over here is a glass tube but pressure ultimately the same okay so right over here you can measure pressure that p equal to rho or whatever the fluid inside then g then a is on so if you know the fluid density you can easily measure the pressure the how much pressure inside okay that is called piezometer on site is open and this one is called YouTube manometer. You see YouTube manometer, one type is close, then right here is opening. And you see this right over here, different fluid. This fluid, this fluid is not the same, but over here it was the used by same fluid, okay? So right over here, pressure is high. That's what he did. He pushed the fluid down. And right over here, atmospheric pressure is weak pressure. So column of fluid is getting upward. That's why you see the difference. Is both has the same pressure, say inside the tank is atmospheric pressure. Then this height will be same level. That means it will be this level, okay? And this is also YouTube manometer. Sometimes this of manometer, you can get in the market to keep in the lab or you can keep in your home it will sometime they have a lcd display over here it shows the atmospheric pressure humidity outside temperature also inside temperature okay other one differential manometer you see right over here this one is called differential manometer because it is giving pressure difference between point 0.1 and point two right over here point one pressure is too high that's why 
he is pushing the fluid, this mercury, down, and over here pressure is low, that's why it's getting up. What is the difference? This mass height is the difference. And you can figure out from the height. If you know this height, say this height is x. So what is the pressure difference will be? Delta P equal to rho in the manometric fluid, rho m g into x. Okay. Uh, then uh, this is also differential manometer is giving pressure difference between uh, two container right over here and right over here say for example you are flowing working uh, a fertilizer company so you have a tank right over the high pressure tank and we are supplying liquid nitrogen in other tank right over here distance between two tank might be say 100 meter or 300 meter and right over here you have pressure p2 on this tank right over here pressure p1 right how flow fluid will pass through tank one to two obviously P1 has to be higher, higher, right? Otherwise, fluid will not go. If both come equal, fluid will stop. Now, any reason there will be, if there is a, some bulb, and sometime your bulb damage, it get closed by mistake, or some faulty equipment, your flow might be stopped, right? So you need to make sure that you have continuous flow, how we can make sure? If you attached a manometer between this tank and this tank anyway, then you can see the, if there is a difference of column, that means there is a, both tank don't have the same pressure. But if the height is the same level, that means you realize something wrong, the both tank has the same pressure. Okay, just giving you a simple example that in professional life, uh, how you can use the manometer. Now, sometimes you might see in modern equipment, they have used the sensor or electronic display, but its principle is the same. Inside, they use the manometer and if you use the sensor, sensor will measure this height. Normally, we measure the height by our measurement or by, you, by viewing by eye. Instead of viewing by eye, we use the sensor. If I view by eye, I measure the height, then use the calculator, figure out the pressure difference. But instead, you can see it by a sensor. Sensor will measure the height, then he pass that data height to a uh, software, then software will show the data and it will coming in the LCD screen. But ultimately, the fundamental principle is the same, okay? Uh, right hand side is called inclined tube manometer. <clears throat> you see, is inclined. So why we are inclined? Right over here, you make one bend, over here one bend, over here. Why is going too much complex situation? And they have a certain angle over here, right? That what is the angle of the bend? Anyone could guess why using the inclined tube manometer? Uh, sometime you might see pressure difference between point tank A and B is very low. If you keep the manometer vertically, you will not get that much reading. So that's why you make it inclined, then it will be easily visible. Even the pressure difference is very small, 
but this height length will be increased so you can you can measure the pressure difference other things sometime due to the space requirement you don't have the space to keep vertically then you might have to buy you know make some bend in the tube uh, due to the pace uh, requirement because you don't have enough pace so you make this just inclined uh, manometer okay and there is some mechanical pressure gas number one is burden tube pressure gas then it is called diaphragm pressure gas below pressure gas then dead weight pressure gas so just give you a simple idea that how they are working in burden uh, tube pressure gas this is the seems like a nut right a bolt but this is a tube it has a thread so you hook up say in the uh, boiler so through the tube fluid will go inside with high pressure then you enter in this tube this round tube this tube is round okay and right over here at a some lever and is the pointer over here so due to the high pressure fluid will pass inside the tube and he will try to make the tube straight and even he, he is not able to make it straight because uh, if pressure is too high extremely high then it will be straight it depends on tube material and also tube size and how much pressure in the your vessel right so due to the fluid pressure they try to expand and through the liver mechanism you will see the reading right over here that is called burden tube pressure gas then it's called diaphragm pressure gas or the diaphragm pressure gas so say this one you install in a top surface of a pressure vessel so this is your pressure vessel right of a kind of a diaphragm diaphragm mean thin skin so say this point this point is opening right over you are attached with a flexible skin so if pressure inside zero it will remain straight but if pressure is high then he'll try to push him up then it will bend like that this one that is called uh, diaphragm pressure okay this one and that deflection will measure by this sensor okay by the spring and this pointer uh, below pressure gas below pressure gas this one you see fluid high pressure fluid entered through the tube then it will work right over here is going this direction fluid entering then you applying pressure over here ultimately this one will move upward and that motion through the spring and lever it will show in the pointer okay other one is dead weight uh, pressure gas this is the attached with the tank this end then fluid pressure will come and he'll try to move this piston upward but if you put some weight right over here it will not move right so by the weight you'll know how much pressure is there that is called dead weight pressure gas so we are not uh, teaching you the mechanical equipment right this is a fluid mechanics class only talk about the force and all the fluid law but since sometime you need to use it in the fluid mechanics lab and also when you have a job after graduation say you went in pdb and you working in the boiler 
but you have a certain pressure gas, you don't know what type of pressure gas. So it will be odd if you, if you don't know or you don't able to realize that this is a pressure gas, this is a hot type. Is diaphragm pressure gas or button tube pressure gas? So uh, you can also look some uh, in the YouTube. They have a lot of video about the uh, pressure gas. Also, you can Google it. Okay, just right over here. I'm giving you the some fundamental idea. Uh, now, how the vapor pressure of the fluid work? Um, what is he? Uh, effect okay so <clears throat> in tericelli in uh, 1643 to 1644 he figure out the atmospheric pressure how he measure it how he measure it he take a mercury tube this is full with mercury. Then he keep it upside down in the mercury. Then he will see, um, he take the empty, empty tube, he put in upside down in the mercury. Then he will see the fluid is getting through the mercury tube in this much height. Okay. So, he measure the height and he will observe day by day. Then suddenly he see this height is decreasing. So what is the reason this height is decreasing? Anyone? No. Low atmospheric pressure. Uh, low atmospheric pressure. Yeah, atmospheric pressure is low, then uh, this height will go down because fluid is pushing down with the lower force, right? The height will be decreased. But you are keeping, he is keeping in the same room. That means uh, elevation. If you keep in a room, instead you are keeping top of a mountain, then height will be decreased because at the mountain atmospheric pressure is low. But right over here, the atmospheric pressure is same. But still, you see the height is decreasing. What is the reason? Because the right over here, it creates some vapor. And this vapor push him down. That's why. Uh, you will realize that this height is gradually coming down. So how much the now atmospheric pressure at the point B? So he's saying right over here, the atmospheric pressure, point B. Atmospheric pressure equal to height of this column plus this vapor pressure of the uh, fluid, he figure out, okay? Because uh, this atmospheric pressure try to push the fluid up but this guy vapor pressure push him down so he need to push the fluid also against this vapor pressure so pressure at point b is atmospheric pressure this equal to gamma a is that means rho g a is height of the column plus vapor pressure and the vapor pressure he found very small, then he does neglect it. Okay. But uh, you remember this way he measured the atmospheric pressure. Okay. And same principle we are using to measure the atmospheric pressure. Sometime you see this type of manometer is using the same principle. Okay. And atmospheric pressure, very interesting thing, you can easily realize. I give you example. I was driving in US, some state, their roads is going not at the top of the hill, but almost very high hill area. Okay. So you are driving and sometime you're going in the top, right? Then you realize you are feeling pressure 
inside your eye, yeah, not eye, in ear. Because our body has pressure, atmospheric pressure, right? And outside, um, pressure is low because you are getting height of the mountain. So what will happen? The air from side, inside your body will try to get out through your ear or through your mouth. And you will feel it that your ear is sometimes, uh, it seems like you are not able to listen anything, you know. Then gradually it, uh, it adjusts. Then you are, when you are coming down, then you see it happening again. Because you are now coming down from a low pressure to the high pressure. High pressure. Yeah. Then you even feel the for about one minute or uh, depends on the person and how much height that you are not able to hear anything through your uh, ear. Okay. Uh, so let's see right over here how we can measure the fluid pressure by using manometric law. Okay, tell me there is a two point, this is a jar. And say we use every day in your house and it has a tube. And you have two point I am considering, point B and other one point A right over here. Which point will be high pressure? Point A or B? B. Point B, because it has more depth. And how much pressure right over here? This point, atmospheric pressure, right? And atmospheric pressure is pushing down, right? So at point B, how can I can measure the pressure at point B? I look, what is the depth of point B from the top surface? H2, so pressure will be uh, rho G H2. Then uh, I need to think that actually there was atmospheric pressure and also that one pushing down. So this mass height is increasing against this atmospheric pressure, right? So total force pressure at point B will be rho G H2 plus atmospheric pressure, okay? Similarly, at point A, pressure will be rho G H1 plus atmospheric pressure. Is clear? Anyone? Okay, tell me I am taking another point, same level of point B then how much will be pressure if i say this is c or new point how much will be pressure over here so equal to pb pressure equal to pb good because they are in the same elevation similarly if i took right over here the pressure will be same because we already know pressure does not sense in a single plane if it will sense if you sense the elevation depth of the fluid. So similarly, if you take point over here, pressure will be different than point B. Over here will be higher, okay? What happened? Seems like my mouse is not working. Okay, now uh, why we are learning this one? Because we need to solve some math and we need to know the how we can measure the pressure in, in the manometry. Okay, so the figure I am showing over here is a YouTube manometer. And in the YouTube manometer, you have point A there is a some fluid and density is rho. And in the right side, over here also same fluid. There is a mercury in the manometer or mercury fluid. So you can say rho man, 
that mean density of manometric fluid okay and this e tube manometer is right here is opening now uh, we can measure the pressure at uh, in the tank but how we can measure it okay now we look in the carefully pressure right over here is atmospheric pressure is try to push him down but due to the higher pressure is coming through right over here and he is pushing the manometric fluid up now they are giving the some data that from top surface to this ellipse, same elevation is point C height is 2 and from point B to this height is B. Okay, now uh, what will be the pressure at point B and C? You see at point B and C I can say pressure will be same. Why? They are same elevation of same fluid because at point B has a manometric fluid, right over here also has manometric fluid. Similarly, if we took a point over right over here, these two point that mean right over here, right over here, let me take the red color, pressure will be the same because they are in the same horizontal line. So that's why uh, pressure in point B and C is the same. So right over here, we are saying pressure at point B and C same. Similarly, if I take a point right over here, how much will be pressure there? if they are in same elevation this point same as pa because they are in the same horizontal line okay so what will be the pressure at point b at point b you see pressure right over here right over here is trying to push the manometric fluid downward by what magnitude pa then b will feel pressure due to the column of h1 so at point b pressure at point a it will be equal to pressure at point a plus pressure due to the height of h1 so at point b pressure will be pa plus rho g h1 okay similarly now point c will be pressure at point d that means atmospheric pressure then height of the fluid h2 pressure d to the height of h2 of the manometric fluid so you'll get p atmosphere plus density rho manometric fluid g h2 now, I can say that this PB, this one, this one is same. That means this value equal to this one. The PA equal to, I can write this equation. From there, you can say, figure out the value of P1. So in this term, you take the right side, then you get this pressure. This way, you can figure out the pressure inside the manometric fluid okay now is clear you understand yes sir. yes sir okay this is the other rule you can follow what is the other rule uh, you can start from any point and if you move downward pressure is positive if you move upward pressure is negative okay uh, let uh, I start from point D and I'll walk to the point C. Okay, then point D, how much the pressure? Atmosphere, P, ATM. Plus, why plus? 
I am walking down from point D. I am coming downward. So how much height I am coming? I am height is H two. H two, then uh, density rho m. Okay. Star G. This will be equal to P C because I already came in at point C. Okay. Now, if you start at the point A, then what is the pressure at point A? P A. I will move point A to B. Then I am coming. I am walking through this direction. Same elevation. So right over also pressure P A. Right over here also pressure P A. Then I am coming down height H one. So I am coming down. That means this will be positive. So H one star rho star G. This will be equal to P B. Then you say P B equal to P C. If we move upward, then you have to move it will be negative okay other thing just this will be the last one then we will stop it i will start point d then i will come to point a okay how we can do it you say pressure in point d how much atmospheric pressure right so I can say P A. Let's say atmospheric pressure P T A T M. Okay, like A T M. Then how I can walk down? You can walk down like this way, right? Throw the tube. This way. But you see, this much data is not given. Even they have the same height when you coming down coming up then this one will be cancel out this height so actually we don't need to walk through the tube you just walk down a little bit cleverly you start from here coming point c then you look why i'll go down because my point c and b is the same thing so from here i will come over here then through the right over here I am coming right over here. I will not go to point A because this point and point A is the same elevation. So I just need to walk from point D to right over here because this point also represents the pressure of point A. Now, okay. how we can do it? Let's see. At point D, pressure is 80 atmospheric pressure. Then you are going down, right? You are going down, that means negative. How much negative? H2 star rho, rho manometric underscore m into z. Now, where you came in now? Point, point C. Point C means you are coming now point B, right? From B. point B, again, you are going upward. So going upward, that means plus. plus. Plus H1, then you say rho into G. This will be hot. This will be equal to, you came in right this point. That means PA. This A. will be equal to PA. And you see, we figure out the value of PA over here. Over here. Uh, the, I write down PB. This is PA. PA equal to, you see, atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. Minus H1 rho G1. Okay, there is one thing, I think. Uh, you are coming down, right? You coming down, it will be... Positive positive i make mistake but 
you going up then it will be negative then you see the same equation you are getting so you can start any side okay just remember coming down is positive and if you going up then it will be uh, negative and negative. this one you remember this sign okay so we stop it over here and next time we try to uh, solve some uh, problem.